Hi friends, this is Joe. This is episode 149 of the Decahedron RPG podcast, and thank you for listening and or watching. <laughs> so today I sat down and I said, you know, I should do a feedback episode. I have all this feedback uh, in my backlog that I need to catch up on, and I'll talk about why and my strategy for that at the end of this. But there were a few that stood out, and I'm like, well, here's one from Jason, and that one could be an episode all on its own. And then here's one from BJ Boyd, and that needs to be one all by its own. It's a great, great feedback, and I, I think I have a lot to say to that. Uh, and plus, some other people commented on that same episode, so I think I'm going to do one episode all on that. And then I have one from... Uh, Daniel from the Bandits Keep, and that one he actually offers to come on the show, uh, which I might take him up on because um, I've been vacillating on it because he and I are actually on the same page, so I don't know if two voices helps, but uh, he maybe he's more articulate than I am, so that, that might help. Um, plus, it's always fun to have a guest. But anyway, all of these deserve their own episode, and so I was like, okay... Let's just pick one of them and run with it. So the one I picked was this one from Jason from the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. Uh, it's a great podcast. You should give it a listen. But anyway, here he is. Hey, this is Jason. I hope this is going through because I didn't hear any audio message. But I just wanted to say I listened to episode 131, 76 patrons. Really enjoyed it. Merck was a great co-host. I thought you guys did a fair job talking about it. My question is, if somebody was interested in getting into Traveler, what do you recommend as a starter, the required books, the essential books for Traveler? Obviously, maybe the facsimile edition, so you have the three books, but what other books would you consider to be maybe not necessary, but good to have. If somebody is building a Traveler collection, you know, 76 patrons maybe, maybe book four mercenary, you know, what are the books if they were looking to put it together do you think are worthwhile getting if somebody is going to get into Traveler, run a campaign, but we're going to make their own adventures, so we're not necessarily talking about, you know, and I know you're not big into the adventures anyway, but what books would you consider essential books? Thank you. Hey Jason, thanks for that call. Uh, yeah, Merck was a great guest, by the way. I think he was my first video guest, too. So that, that rocked. And, uh, yeah. So what version of Traveler would I recommend? So to answer the question, short and sweet, and then I'll expound on it. But just like you said, that facsimile edition, I have mine right here. Um, it's one book. It's nine bucks on drive through for the printed copy. And if you want it, just the electronic version, it is legitimately free. It's not pirated. It's not anything. You can download it from DriveThru for free. Why wouldn't you? And what this is, is just, it's the 1980 version of the core three books with uh, some footnotes in errata. And it has everything you need, legitimate, free. Why not? Let you give it a try. Um, that is what I would do. Now, if we're saying money is no object and we can find things, I'm going to say <laughs> there was actually something called the Traveler Starter Edition. And the Starship Combat in that version is a lot simpler. The Starship Combat in Basic Traveler is based on a board game called Triplanetary. And so... It's like a game within a game, and it takes some mastery to learn the way the ships move. And we were playing this wily ship captain, um, you know, who's had five terms of experience. Uh, then you as a player don't understand vector movement. That, that's, that's like a disconnect for me. And... Uh, it's one of those things that requires system mastery to play well, and I'm never a fan of that. The starter version of Traveler that GDW published in the 80s, um, that the, instead of having the hex grid and you move so many hexes, it is just kind of like a football field. It's just a, a one-dimensional board. 
uh, kind of like Traveler's hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the Starship combat are more similar now. And so I highly recommend that one. Yeah, so what supplements? You said 76 patrons. I just recommend that as a supplement in general. Uh, it's just 60 something, 54, <laughs> 54 adventure seeds, which are cool. And I, I, really, I really like that book. But is it necessary if you're gonna start play? No, I don't think so. Uh, the only other book I would say would be supplement for Citizens of the Imperium. And that just gives you some additional character creation options. Uh, you know, like pirates, like doctors, like uh, flyers, diplomats, all those are in there. Um, there's something I like in there. I can't remember what it is. I, I have the book because there's one character. Oh, nobles. I think that's probably one. Nobles are in there as a character class. I call them character class. You know what I mean. Background. Um, yeah. So that's what I would get. But now to rewind and answer kind of a question you didn't ask, uh, which is, hey, Joe, what are all the editions of Traveler and why would I want one over the other? So in the beginning, there was Traveler. It was the three little black books, book one, book two, book three, just like D&D, &D, only those were three little brown books. And um, it was a good game and it sold well and it got a lot of followings. So they started expanding on it. And just like D&D expanded with Greyhawk and all that, Greyhawk, Blackmore, you know, you know the scheme. Um, Traveler came out with Book 4, Mercenary, then Book 5, High Guard. So Mercenary was more advanced combat rules and more advanced rules to generate army and marine type characters, mercenaries. High Guard was... Uh, more advanced rules for ship-to-ship -ship combat, building ships, more types of weapons, and much more in-depth character creation for uh, Navy characters. Not wet Navy like water, but, you know, Imperial Navy, like Starfleet. But there's no Starfleet in the Traveler universe. Uh, book 5, well, I mean, book 6 was Scouts. Uh, more advanced rules for generating planets. So in Basic Traveler, when you create a world, it, the assumption is that there's only one habitable world in the system and you're generating the information for that. In Scouts, you're generating the entire star system. You're saying, what kind of star is it? Then you're saying, how many planets does that star have? How many of those are habitable? habitable? <laughs> how many of those are habitable? <laughs> um, yeah, how many moons does each of those planets have and all that stuff, which for most games is overkill because players come into the system, they land at the planet, they find an adventure or they find cargo and then they leave. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Anyway, the next book was Merchant Prince, which just like we just did for um, Scouts, and Navy, and I mean, we do this for merchant characters now. It talks about the different types of merchant lines, you know, tramp freighters and big merchant lines and local merchant lines. And again, it's a lot more information than I feel I need, uh, but it does have that advanced character creation for uh, merchant characters. When I say advanced character creation, by the way, uh, basic traveler, you had uh, four year terms, and so you rolled a life path for your character in chunks of four years. In these advanced systems, you do it yearly. And the problem, much like most splat books in the universe, because now you can gain skills every year instead of every four years, the characters that you generate this way are much more powerful, uh, they're much more competent, that's for sure, than the characters you create the old way. And so then they come kind of incompatible. I mean, you can still play them, but you're going to have wild... I made a mercenaries character, so he's like really powerful. And, you know, I made a standard book one character. They don't mesh well in my experience. And so if you're, if you go the splat route, yeah, if you go the splat book route, you're kind of locked in the splat book route. And like I said, that's a lot of complexity that in the end, I don't think adds to gameplay enjoyment. And so that's why these days I say, nah, you don't need them. All right. So sometimes we call that Traveler 1.5. <laughs>
So the second version of Traveler that came out was Mega Traveler. And pretty much just like D&D started out as an idea of let's take all these D&D books and supplements and everything and make one book. That's what Mega Traveler was. Um, not very well edited. There's lots of mistakes. And no attempt though, unlike D&D that attempted to you know, like balance things out within each other, no attempt was made there. They have the basic character creation and the advanced character creation for those classes and uh, but not for the others. So, uh, story-wise, by the way, the story of Traveler is this thing called the Third Imperium. Uh, in the very first edition, they barely talk about it at all. As the supplements came out, they start to talk about it more and more. By the 1980 second edition is what they call it of Traveler. It's still the Little Black Books, though. Um, it's in there a little bit. Not a whole lot. Um, someone doesn't like it. It says it's too much, but you know, I've went through there looking for it. It's, it's not, it, there's an applied setting, but it's not heavy handed or anything. Uh, by the time, once you start buying like their adventures and their supplements and everything, it does get heavy handed, but yeah, so be it. So in Mega Traveler, what they do though, is that they start a war in the third Imperium, a war for secession, I think it was. Um, one of the dukes he thinks he should be emperor and oh no it starts with the assassination of uh, Emperor S uh, Stefan if I remember right and uh, yeah the, a whole bunch of people who want to be emperor now and so it's you know plunges the the thing <laughs> the Imperium into chaos uh, but again I don't play in other people's worlds very few exceptions Star Trek Paranoia even then, my alpha complex is very different from the one they describe. So, uh, I, anyway. <laughs> um, so, after Mega Traveler was Traveler, the New Era. And in that one, they. It's almost a Y2K thing. <laughs> All the computers stopped working, but it's more than that. All the computers have gone psycho. Uh, during the Secession Wars, someone developed a computer virus. Uh, and try to release it upon their enemies, but it got wild and it went everywhere. And so all the computer systems turn against the humans. And so starships will suddenly open up all their airlocks, you know, uh, venting their crew into space, shut off air, uh, life support, uh, or drive themselves towards planets, you know. And so it takes place several, several years after that. And there's different factions trying now to, to reconstruct things. This is my favorite Traveler era. If I were to play in the Traveler universe, this is when I would play. I love that concept. Uh, I've used that concept outside of Traveler in my own science fiction worlds. Um, in fact, and even in fantasy, not the computer part, but yeah. Um, it's kind of a science fiction post-apocalyptic let's recreate. I love that concept. Uh, so that's Traveler of the New Era. After that, GDW folded, and Mark Miller uh, produced his next version of Traveler, which he just called T4, or Traveler 4th Edition. No, sorry, lies. He called it Mark Miller's Traveler. Everyone else just calls it T4. Um, all the rules are changed. Very different game system. Uh, basic Traveler is very simple. You roll 2D try to get high. In this one, you roll a variable amount of dice, trying to roll low. Yeah, I think you're trying to roll low. I'm trying to remember. I think it might be the same uh, rule set as uh, as uh, Twilight 2000. I am not certain, though. I think, though, now that I'm mentioning that, I think that Traveler of the New Era did that. So if you like the Twilight 2000 rules and you want to play them in Traveler, there you go. Um, but Mark Miller's Traveler, like, G, like I said, GDW had just folded, so Mark Miller was publishing this on his own, and I'm guessing he could not hire an editor because typos and bad layout. The whole thing is just horrible production values. Probably the worst thing he's ever done. And like I said, I don't think that's his fault. I think it's because he lost his entire support system around him. Well, I guess it is fault, his fault because he put it out anyway. But, you know, man's got to eat. So, whatever. So that's uh, Traveler 4th. And then recently, within the last 
10 years or so, uh, Mark Miller has published Traveler 5th edition, which I don't have. Um, when you look at his website, he says it's like a thousand pages of materials. I, I don't have time to read a thousand pages of rules for a game. No, I, no, no, that's not me. If it's you, <laughs> apparently somebody, because somebody's buying it, right? You know, have at it, enjoy. But for, for Joe, uh, I'm not doing thousands of pages for a game. So those are the official Traveler versions from Mark Miller. But there's some forks. So GURPS. Steve Jackson was a huge Traveler fan, and so when he could, he licensed Traveler for GURPS, and he called it GURPS Traveler. Again, GURPS is known for the production values, uh, great production values, but in my opinion, this is playing GURPS in the third Imperium. Oh, and what Steve Jackson does, by the way, is he does a retcon. This is an alternate universe where the assassination never happened, so the war never happened, and there you go. In my opinion, yeah, it feels like just playing GURPS in the Third Imperium. And like I said, I don't like the Third Imperium. I don't want to play in Mark Miller's world. I want to play in my world. Everything that felt travelerish about Traveler, which when it comes down to it for me is the way starships work, uh, starship combat, at least starships still work with jump and everything the same way. Uh, but starship combat, character creation, and but now you're playing GURPS characters and you don't have that life path. And it, it just, I don't know, it missed the mark for me, <laughs> which is weird. I love GURPS and I love Traveler-ish. <laughs> um, and so when this came out, I was all excited. And I so maybe it just failed to live up to my expectations, but no, it wasn't for me. Uh, so that was GURPS Traveler. Oh, also Hero, uh, Stephen Long, right? Uh, was the publisher for Hero, Hero Games. You know, they started out with a superhero role-playing system. Very complex system. Um, character creation takes a long time, but I think once you get into play, it goes quicker. Anyway, there was a Hero Traveler. I never had that version, so I can't say much about it other than there was a Hero Traveler. <laughs> At some point, uh, Game Designers Workshop, who created Traveler, made a game called Traveler 2300. But... It's not Traveler at all. Um, I guess it was supposed to be like the early history of the Salamani part. Of, that's the Earth. <laughs> part of the Traveler universe. But really has nothing to do with Traveler in terms of rules or anything. Later they dropped the word Traveler off it altogether and they just called it 2300 AD. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't have much to say about that one. Uh, and then, uh, most famously, Mongoose got a license for Traveler. And they did a OGL, SRD, and everything. And then somebody else took that SRD and made a free version of Mongoose Traveler called Cepheus. And um, if you want a more modern take on Traveler, that might be the way to go. Um, oh, I left out Hunter Gordon. Hunter Gordon made when the D20 system came out, you know, D&D 3rd Edition. Hunter Gordon made Traveler D20, T20 it was called. Um, and that's kind of cool because I was playing with Hunter Gordon and that group. I was playing Traveler with them. We weren't playing T20 though. We were playing normal Traveler. Um, and that's kind of cool. But um, they made T20 and then, oh, Mongoose. And then Mongoose made a second edition, which I believe is not OGL. I've never seen it. I don't know what it looks like. Well, it's black books, hardcover. It's good production values from what I've seen, but I've never bought them and read them, and so I can't talk about how they play. Um, I really, I don't. With this, I don't feel the need to buy any other version. So to wrap it back to the original question, what would I get to start Traveler? This is what I would get. Ten bucks gets you everything you need in print or download it for free, legally and legitimately. Yep, that's all I have about that. Now about feedback, what am I gonna do? I have all these episodes, I mean all these, I think I counted last night, there's like 20 something uh, 
feedback to respond to. Feedback episodes don't perform well on YouTube. I guess it's something that YouTube audience doesn't like. And these days, my YouTube audience is about four times bigger than my podcast audience. So the question comes up, do I want to pivot to being more of a YouTuber than a podcaster? And I don't think so. Um, YouTubers spend time chasing the algorithm, I guess because they're trying to make a buck. And, you know, there's, there's all these, you know, this is what you do to get more views, and this is, uh, this is what you do, you know, this is what viewers like. And, you know, you know, if you don't put your video out at the right time, it won't do as well. And if your last one did not well, then the algorithm's not going to promote it next time. I, I don't want to play those games. From the beginning, my goal for the, for the podcast has been just to be me, just to be authentic and be me. It's one of the things I used to try to explain to James when he was a full-time co-host. He's like, uh, we could do this or we could, and I'm like, but that's, that's not me. Um, I, do, I want it to be real. I want it to be authentic. Um, this is me. This is who I am. And so um, I think... I'm going to do some feedback episodes over the next month or two uh, just to get caught up. Um, and the algorithm doesn't like it. The algorithm doesn't like it. And life goes on and I don't care because I am me. On the other hand, if you listening to this or watching this don't like to hear feedback episodes, that's something I'll care about. And I will just start responding to feedback people individually through email or whatever. So let me know if you like or don't like feedback. Um, but if, unless it's pretty overwhelming <laughs> that you don't like feedback, I'm going to continue. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's everything. Sorry, sorry, uh, uh, I can talk. <laughs> that's it. That's everything. Thanks for watching and or listening. And until next time. Happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Dekihedron RPG podcast. Please come back again to the Dekihedron RPG podcast.